Hey, they don't tell the truth. Smiling faces, just a frown turned upside down. <laughs> and you're laughing, and if you're laughing, the dentist is laughing. I'm sure your patients are laughing, too. Yeah, yeah. smile upside down. Yeah, it's just a frown turned upside down. Dr. Ron Zokel and Tom Lucas with you. It's uh, Boomer Life, and today we're speaking about uh, BC Perio Dental Health at Implant Center in Vancouver, also a, an office, a clinic in Coquitlam to serve you, too. Just before the break, we were talking about free consultations I love to see. I love the word free. Number one, uh, number two, consultation is good. So now I'm starting to think. I go down for my free consultation. I have a free cup of coffee. I get a free view. The dentist comes in to see me, and then after we say hello, how are you? Nice to meet you, Doctor Ron. Then what happens? Uh, well, I take a look at the X-rays. I took a look inside your mouth, get an understanding of what your issues are from my perspective, and then we sit down and we talk about the issues from your perspective. Okay. And we discuss your priorities and your needs. And me, armed with the information that we got from our x-rays and my examination, I can give you some guidance as to where you ought to go with your treatment. So this free consultation then, which doesn't cost anything because it's free, uh, can tell exactly, it will tell you and it will tell the patient what has to be done, how you can do it, and what it's going to cost. That's the idea. Pretty darn cool. Mm -hmm. Pretty darn cool. And th the other point is that I think it's important to make is there is no obligation to continue with us. Our, our responsibility to start with is to provide information. And all everybody does better when they're armed with as much information as you possibly get. Then you can make a logical and rational decision as to mm -hmm. what you'd like to do. So people come to see you obviously because they have problems in their mouth. But what sort of problems c could somebody be having and then think, I should go and see Dr. Ron's local? What, what kind of different things go on in there? Oh, gosh. I, I, I suppose... If you have failing teeth, one or any or a number or all of your teeth, and you're unsure as to how to go about managing it, that's the type of stuff that we would probably provide our best service for. Because mm -hmm. we can guide you in the what we consider to be the very, very best way to be treated. Are there any foods that are good for one's teeth? I don't think so. I think probably the uh, when it comes to teeth, it depends on how much force you generate on them. And most foods, if their teeth are healthy, will have no impact on your teeth at all. If it's sugars and things like that, you just clean your teeth properly and there's no impact on them. So how long should people brush their teeth? It's, it's interesting. The number amount of time, we generally say about two to three minutes is going to cover your whole mouth. If everything is healthy and stable, once you start losing some gum and bone structure and exposing roots and things like that, it's going to be more difficult to actually clean your teeth. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's going to take you a little bit longer. And you've got to be a little bit more diligent in some of the more difficult areas to get into if you want to keep everything healthy. So it's almost like they say you should wash your hands and sing in your mind happy birthday twice. Would that kind of work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the toothbrushes with uh, the timers, the three-minute timers, for example. And the and other question is, have you ever seen the tooth fairy? Uh, I'm sorry. You have, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm serious. I, I think the tooth fairy hangs the fairy hangs out of BC Perio because people are just like you. You sprinkle stardust and magic dust on them, oh. and they come out. They're all so happy. Well, that's a it's a wonderful thing when people are happy after their dental treatment. We've talked about uh, about the ages, and we talked about the, the older gentleman that came to see you one time. I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he was in his 90s. Uh, and then he went on a cruise after and was trying to hustle some woman in her 40s. And <laughs> she liked his teeth, and it was a, it was a winning combination. Well, uh, I think there's probably experiences like that. Uh, I, I know there is one lady who is in her mid-40s when we finished her treatment. Uh, and when she finished, she started 45, and she was 47 when she finished. And a year later, she came back, and she had married a 27-year-old young man. Um <laughs> <laughs> So way, there's, way to go. it's a life changer. <laughs> we we talk about older people, but and we talk. We I think we said in one show that you have to be at the legal age to come to your clinic to visit you. What if there is a situation where there's maybe a mom or dad at home and they have a, a child that is having problems with their teeth? Could mom and dad come down with the child to? Oh, absolutely, you? and and I think so. If a person is a minor, that's below the age of nineteen, and they're coming to see us, uh, they probably have a specific issue with one or two teeth or something got mm -hmm. damaged, and and or. Uh, the, their dentist. See, we don't see periodontal disease really heavy in people who are in their adolescence. So when we see them, there's usually a complicated problem. You might have a, to have a tooth loss or an implant placed. The biggest problem 
we have with young people is that they're not fully grown mm -hmm. and when their jaw structure has to continue growing it's not yet time to put the implant in we have to wait till the the bone is completely grown and then of course we'll have a potential for a solution that's really good you and sometimes the timing of that's really really important so coming in early when the problem is there even though you may not be right at this point there's some ways that we can stabilize you until you have mm. completed that growth process and then have the implant placed in a few years You've had a lot of uh, interesting people come through the front door, a lot of interesting patients. I know you've had some people from Hollywood. You've actually had some sports celebrities. We won't ask who, because I know you couldn't tell us anyway, but with those sports uh, stars, have any of them been hit in the mouth of the puck? <laughs> Almost all of them. <laughs> So they come to see you or Dr. Bobby Birdie, and uh, what do they just want, teeth in a day? or what? Are, what are... No, no, no. They're, they're more interested in recovering what they lost during their sporting activities. And if they're still active, they want to know whether it's appropriate to start now or delay it until they finish their sporting activities. Uh, it, but they do want the best. And that's what I found is that, is that people want to be treated optimally when you come from that area. Would any of those people be playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs now? Not right now. Not right now. No. Okay, so that leaves the home team out then. Oh, Ooh, okay. The playoffs haven't started. You've had movie stars come to see you too. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Certainly. <laughs> couldn't couldn't get you to give a name, eh? Sorry. I pray not. I as much as I would love I to. I know. I know. You'd like to like maybe on another show one day we could after you retire if you ever do that. <laughs> when they can't come after me exactly. for divulging exactly. private information. <laughs> so uh, people are people have known your name for a long time because you've been taking care of folks in this area for a long, long time. Do you think you're ever going to quit? Oh, I think there's going to come a time when that's going to be. I don't expect it to be soon. I don't think so. No. Let me ask you why. You just having too much fun or what? Well, that's part of it. And, and I've been asked this because I have classmates who have long retired. And I find there are some dentists who like to get out of dentistry because they're just not, it's not fun for them. And it's not enjoyable. It's more stress than it is anything else. I don't think you last huge years in this field if it's stressful. Mm -hmm. The more you know about your field and the more you're on top of pretty much all the leading edge of your field, this becomes non-stressful. We know what makes it stressful for the patient to go and see you, uh, Dr. Zokel, because like, oh my God, I'm afraid to go to the dentist. What on the other side of the coin makes it stressful for the dentist? I think so. Yeah. I, no dentist wants to have that all the time, although they are well equipped and prepared to deal with people who have anxiety issues about dentistry from time to time. And uh, if, 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 you would, if every patient that was treated by a particular dentist came in with anxieties like that, I think they get burnout pretty quick. <laughs> do you ever have the opportunity to know ahead of time what the situation with a particular patient is, or do you just start from scratch as soon as they come through the, through the door? It depends. If the person is referred by their, their dentist, uh, often the referral will come in and just say this person uh, prefers to be sedated. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of issues. So they'll give a bit of a background as to the person they're referring over. And, and that's very helpful because now it gives us a starting process. Most people who are anxious have no hesitation in telling you, you know, I, don't know, I, rather, I, I think I'd rather be sedated or like, is it possible to have be put out for your treatment? This is this is one of those questions. Gets I would have no problem then. telling you that. <laughs> no. I, just give me some drugs. I'll be OK. <laughs> uh, and that's what happens. And, and when we do sedation and what we have done sedation in the past, people who get sedated want it all the time yeah, <laughs> and yeah. It's, no 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 you don't need it for this stuff but can you give it to me anyway no <laughs> <laughs> you you probably know in the morning who you're going to be seeing during that day do you have an opportunity to maybe look at their files and try to size that person up before they come through their your front door if they're a new patient Sometimes we have that background, yeah, and yeah. it depends, again, on the referral. If it's somebody who comes in from a radio station, they generally don't tell us an awful lot about themselves. However, the, the receptionist at PC Perio will try to talk and find out what it is they're looking for to have a ballpark, and we'll start from there. Well, we're pretty private people. You know that. Totally. But I'm sure you can get us talking. And if you want to talk to Dr. Ron Zokel or Dr. Bobby Birdie, head on down to BC Perio Dental Health and Implant Center. The address is uh, 777 West Broadway. It's suite number 501. So that's 501 777 West Broadway in Vancouver. The telephone number, if you want to call, uh, you can probably call, call Monday, right? Call Monday. Call Monday. The telephone number 604 872 0222. 604 872 0222. You have chamber music playing at your place? Just like what's in the background oh, now. I like it. That's good. In Coquitlam, it's 250 1175 Johnson Street. 250 1175 Johnson Street in Coquitlam. The telephone number out there is 604 
936-8244. This is great. I like this. <laughs> we should have done this more often. 602, uh, 604 rather, 604-936-8244 is the Coquitlam office. We're speaking with Dr. Ron Zogel, and you're listening to Boomer Life. I'm Tom Lucas, and you've got it uh, hopefully welded to see how 650 smooth and easy. <laughs> <laughs> 